This is a continuation of the GT5 Halcyon build series. To follow along, head to elamscafeboutique.com. There you'll find a whole bunch of plan packs that include schematics, layout diagrams, and other high quality JPEGs. This video concentrates on the wiring of the rear panel and it may not seem like much but it can really bunch up your undies. I just want to go over some wire strippers that I use and these ones are fantastic quality and they're great for general purpose wire stripping. However, I find that they're just a wee bit too big and bulky for cramped up chassis work. I use these quite often, little plier gripper type units, and they're great for when you're a little bit pressed for room. I find that I use this kind of wire stripper the most, and it's more of a freestyle type operation, and interestingly enough I found that it's quite handy for a number of other things. First things first, it's time to prepare the chassis by mounting the transformers and loading the potentiometers. Depending on the transformers that you're using, you may have superfluous cables, and I terminate them with a little bit of heat shrink. Where appropriate, I like to run all my cables together nice and neatly, and I'm not an advocate of twisting any of the output transformer cables. Time to uplift the circuit from the jig and transfer it into the chassis. This is an optional choice, however for this build I'm utilizing tube shields and a retainer. If you're utilizing tube shields, then this stage is going to try out your intestinal fortitude. In fact, I'd give this a solid 7 out of 10 on the undies bunch factor scale. In order to affix the tube shield base, you have to insert the bolt from the top of the chassis, and that means that screwing on the little nut is going to be very tedious. I 
I find the sharp ends of the transformer cables incredibly irritating. They scratch both components and the chassis, and so I wrap them with a little bit of insulation tape. These are the 6.3 volt filament windings and they are the first cables that I attach to the turret board. The filter capacitor is sitting just a little bit too close to the turret for my liking so I'm using a piece of plastic just to offer a wee bit of protection. Don't forget to insert your fuse. Once the fuse is inserted, you may have noticed that the rear of the socket sticks out quite a bit. And this is potentially very dangerous. And so once all the cables are run, I like to insulate the socket as much as I can. After inserting the socket into the chassis, I like to terminate both ground cables and twisting them together serves absolutely no other purpose other than allowing me to keep things nice and neat. Time to mount the rear switches and I'm flaring out the terminals just a little bit. I'm a fan of carling switches, however in some situations I've found that the rivet that affixes the top plate onto the switch can sometimes develop a little bit of rust and I have to clean it off with a bit of solvent wax and a small wire brush and that kind of annoys me a little bit. It's not a deal breaker but it's perhaps something that's not necessary. This is where you just have to keep your cool and try to run the cables as neat as possible against the rear panel.
This is one of the cables from the primary winding of the vintage transformer that I'm using and its old insulation tends to melt very easily so I'm careful to pre-tin so that I can just keep the soldering iron on the work for the shortest amount of time possible. I've lengthened the other primary winding with solid core cable and this helps me to bend it where I want it and to also keep it in position. Time to run the output transformer cables. Give yourself a lot of room here. It's better to have more cable than to make the mistake of cutting the cable too short. These are great ohm selector switches. Made in Japan and very good quality. To avoid any unnecessary loops, I run all of the output transformer secondary cables around the back of the switch, and this includes the cable that connects to earth. I have noticed in the past that if the soldering iron is left for too long on the terminals, there is the potential to mount the plastic, and for this reason I advise pre-tinning. This little grey cable got me, just a little bit sloppy, a little bit too much solder, the insulation pulled back a bit, however I didn't melt the switch plastic and it was all solid in the end, so there's no use crying over spilt milk. I like to loop the primary winding cables of the output transformer around the back of the socket and this just gives me a little bit of extra room. It's best if the output jack is insulated. I'm using the shoulder washer on the inside and I'm just using a, a regular fiber washer on the outside. For whatever reason, the common terminal of the ohm selector switch is thinner than the others, and so extreme care is needed. It transfers a lot of heat quickly to the plastic, and you don't want to melt it.
congratulations and well done for making it this far. Hopefully your build is going all neat and tidy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.